Everyone, it's Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist here. Uh, in today's video, I want to share with you the exact tips and strategies I recommend uh, to people that I coach across the world uh, and recommend to them uh, if they have back, butt, and sciatica pains uh, when they're driving. So uh, if you can't stand uh, the thought of you know going on another car ride and or uh, you're just dreading the next trip because driving has been a nightmare for you, uh, because you're dealing with some type of back, butt, or sciatica raging leg pain, uh, I totally get it. This is what I do every day. So I'm going to help you out by sharing these tips and strategies by walking through a flow chart I created as well as taking you outside into my own car uh, so you can learn how to best apply these strategies. So uh, be sure to watch the end so that you can see uh, you know, everything I have to share, all the tips, all the advice so that you can find the most comfort on your next trip. So in case you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Dr. Charlie Johnson. I'm a doctor of physical therapy and an orthopedic uh, specialist, and I help people with back, butt, and sciatica pains heal naturally by teaching them how to use movement as medicine, as well as teaching them day-to-day -day strategies like I'm going to share here today uh, to help them find more comfort in their everyday lives. So if you'd like to find out how you can fix yourself and find more comfort naturally without needing pills, shots, or surgery, or relying on someone else to fix you, then I want you to hit the subscribe button uh, and the bell so you get notifications when I post weekly content. All right, so here's the flow chart that I'm going to use to keep us on track uh, and, you know, these are the exact tips and strategies I share with my private coaching clients who are dealing with these types of back, uh, butt, and sciatica problems, whether it be due to a, uh, due to a piriformis problem, sciatica problem, or something else. Um, these are the exact tips and strategies I share if somebody's saying, Dr. Charlie, I just can't stand uh, driving. So first things first, we're going to talk about, you know, why does driving hurt? It's really important uh, that you understand uh, the idea behind when I move my body this way, or when I'm having a... Uh, problem moving my body in a certain direction, that direction or that individual motion shows up in life. And for you, motions that you're having trouble doing right now are showing up in life as trouble driving. So I want to share with you, uh, you know, outside of the vehicle, what that looks like and why you're having trouble driving. Because if you don't understand the why, then all of this what uh, that you should be doing or tactics you should be applying won't mean as much. So I'm going to walk you outside here and share exactly why you have trouble driving. All right, so we're outside, and one thing real quick that I need you to understand is that a lot of times people think like their pain is random and that it just happens for no reason, but realize that motion is life. So if you have trouble doing something, whether you go to the Cairo and they have you move a certain way or the PT or the massage therapist, and you have trouble moving your leg or you know, bending your body or twisting something, that's going to show up in life as a certain activity. So you just happen to be having problems with motions that are showing up in driving. So treatment needs to be aimed at freeing up those motions so you can unlock your ability to live life or drive or sleep or whatever it may be. Okay, But just get that this is driving, right? So if you're here driving, your, kind, your body's in kind of a C shape and your legs are often extended, right? So again, on the flow chart, you'll be able to see kind of the uh, stick figure of it just to kind of remove my body out of it. But the idea is, is that this is the general position of driving, all right? Like this, kind of a forward base, folded forward motion, all right? Now, if you evaluate yourself, I already know, I'm not a psychic, I don't have magical powers. I already know that you're gonna have problems with at least one of three motions. So most people have trouble going forward, whether it be from below. So you can just, you know, if you have trouble doing this, you can try it on either side. Or you have trouble going down from above, down center, down to the left, down to the right. Or you're sitting here, you can sit on a couch or whatever if you want to test it. But if you have trouble straightening and lifting up your legs on either side, especially the right leg, or if you drive a manual transmission, the left leg as well. Um, or if you're a two-footed driver, you're in trouble. All right. The idea is, is that if you have trouble doing any of those motions, all right, you're not going to be able to drive comfortably. So again, any treatment needs to be aimed at uh, trying to unlock those motions and improve those motions because I know that once you can do those individual motion parts, you can do the activity of driving. So that's why you have trouble driving. You can't do those individual motions. You won't be able to integrate those motions into what we're looking at now as driving. All right, so we just chatted about why you have trouble driving, specific movement patterns, right, that uh, you're putting your body into when you self-evaluate yourself, the knee to chest, seat to four bend, and leg raise. Uh, and really what driving is, is it's just all those things kind of combined. So, you know, if you have yuckiness in a little evaluation and inability to do certain individual motions, again, it shows up as driving, and that's why you can't do it. So now let's talk about some things and strategies you can apply before you actually drive that will make a big difference in your ability to find comfort uh, and drive with less pain. So first things first, um, I want you to understand that you can use movement as medicine. So uh, maybe in the past, if you have trouble driving, you've taken an Advil or an naproxen or a Tylenol or some pain pill or something like that, because again, you were just like 
you were knowing that the pain was going to come on. So preventatively, um, you popped a pill, right? Well, I want you to pop uh, movement as that pill. All right. So basically think of it like this. So a lot of these directions um, that you probably have trouble with, if you self-evaluate, think of it, right? Knee to chest, seated for a bend, maybe a leg raise. They're kind of, you know, as well as driving as an activity, kind of moving the body forward. So if you think of it like this, the body can move north, forward. It can move right, east. It can move left, west. Uh, and it can move backwards or south. Right. So if the northbound lane, the forward lane is jam, your body doesn't want to go that way. Often it will respond to you moving um, backwards or, you know, you drive northbound and jam this way. Usually southbound is pretty clear. And you're like, wow, that'd be cool if I could hop that way and it'll get me to where I want to go. Right. So um, point is, is let's make a U-turn instead of moving the body forward. Um, let's go ahead and let's test some things out in the backwards direction. So forwards jammed. Uh, then we want to look backwards as a potential first step. It doesn't mean this is going to be perfect for you. So if you're watching this, I'm not saying it always works for everybody. I'm just saying start to think of movement uh, and break it down in a way that helps you discover what's best for you. All right. So I'm going to talk to you about how you can move your body uh, backwards because that's the way we're going to, uh, you know, explore from above or from below and or look if you have another motion that's working for you, an exercise you've been doing, something else you found on YouTube, whatever it is, something you made up and it's working for you, and it's a yummy motion, meaning it feels good for you, uh, then you could go ahead and you could apply that here. So I'm going to show you again um, some different options for you to move your body in a way that might be valuable, uh, such that you can use it as movement as medicine right before you get in the car. So let me go show you uh, that now. All right, so remember we talked about if you have trouble moving forward, northbound lane is jammed, Southbound is usually pretty good, right? So we can move the back, the body backwards if forward uh, is really yucky. I'm not saying it works for everybody, but it's a good starting point to go in the opposite, the direction of your yuckiest direction. So we wanna be looking at the backwards motion just as a quick tip here that's a, a winner for a lot of people with these types of problems. So what you can do is realize it's sort of like a door hinge, all right? You can move the body from above backwards or from below backwards. So a lot of people just think of like the one way they've been told to do things, which is the traditional approach like this, right? And while that can work, just realize there are other ways to do it. So what I want you to do real quick is just scan these several motions and just find the one that feels best for you. Don't get any more, don't make it any more complicated than that. Just go ahead. What I want you to do is feet wherever they feel comfy. Just go ahead, hands on hips and just bend backwards for me. So you're going to do like one or two of these, right? You're just going to see how it feels. If it's really, really yucky, it's gonna be off limits, all right? A little stiffness though is okay, but it shouldn't be zapping anything down your leg, all right? And then what you can do is you can put your right leg back and see how that feels compared to both legs forward. And then you can put your left leg back and see how that feels. And for me, this one feels the best. So that's the motion that I might pick if I wanted to move my body from above. Let's just say that you didn't like any of those motions, all right? And or, you know, they were all yucky or you had something against them, maybe a bad experience, whatever. You could also move the body from below using the legs. So the other thing you could do, hold on if you need balance, don't break your uh, side view mirror off, all right? But the idea would be that you could just stand here and just test kicking your legs back. So you might find that one feels better than the other. The other thing you could do is you could just play around with rotating the legs in or out on both sides. So in or out. So basically we've got straight back, out or in, all right? Straight back, out or in, and just find again, which of those feels best. And I want you to pick, you know, the top one or two, all right? And that's the motion that you're going to use and you're going to do it for repetitions before you get right in the car. Right, so again, you know, if you've had trouble driving in the past and you pop a pain pill or some type of muscle relaxer or something like that before you get in the car, I want you to think of movement as your medicine and I want you to test going backwards, center, backwards with the right leg, backwards with the left leg, and then I want you to think about moving from below, testing neutral, in, out on either leg, all right, and I want you to find what feels best, all right, with all those options. Pick something from above, pick something from below, just to stay focused, all right? And again, you're gonna do that. Maybe you pick 
um, you know, uh, one set of 10 reps or two sets of 10 reps, whatever feels comfy. You just want to take a dose of it before you get in the car because you know that that's potentially going to be yucky. Or let's just say you hate all of those motions. Dr. Charlie, none of those work. That's fine. We can find a motion that works for you, but maybe you have one. Maybe you have another yummy motion or exercise or motion that you've been trying. You were told it, you looked it up, whatever. Go ahead and do that. Maybe it's a cat camel or it's a certain yoga pose or whatever. Go ahead and do that thing. Take a sample of it. Again, two sets of certain number of reps or holds or something like that and do it right before you get in the car. So another thing we should be doing in the before driving phase, before we even get in the car, is we should be testing how the body feels so we can find maybe some motions that are going to work for us or find what feels best as far as environmental things, um, as well as uh, you know some different strategies such that we can plan accordingly so we're not just stuck in a car driving for five hours or two hours or whatever it is, all right? So first things first, again, I'll show you this um, in the actual, you know, in the actual vehicle itself, but surface, seat position, uh, pillows and cushions, what are some things you can do there to change how you're feeling? Uh, what about body position? Is there a way you can actually move your body in a car uh, to find relief? And how can you even tell that before you get in the car, what that might look like? Uh, and then what are some strategies for chunking your trip? So again, that you're not doing it all or none so that you can put a break or a stop in between there. So let me show you that now. All right, so when you're in the car, you can change several variables, right? So again, this is before you even take a drive. So if you're trying to do this when you're driving, I guess you could do it, but don't get in an accident, stay safe. All right, so what we wanna do is just get out in the car, prep, take a little bit extra time, and manipulate the surface. So, you know, I have a towel here, uh, bring out a couple pillows. You might find that putting this under your butt and sitting on it feels way better than not having it. Maybe you have some like really cushy seats or maybe you have, uh, maybe you need like a little piece of plywood or a firm cushion, all right? Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You'd find what's most comfy for you. So one thing that people um, kind of get trapped by mentally and physically because it can cause more pain is this belief that there's like a right or wrong way to do things. And there's not, you need to find what's best for your body. So I'm saying this loosely, play around with, cushions under the bottom, soft surface, hard surface, just find what works best. Maybe if you have an option to take one car versus the other car, you sit in it and you see what feels best, all right? So that's the surface. The next thing you can do, right, is you can play with the seat position, all right? So now this thing doesn't go really quick, but you know, you can move the seat forward, just kind of round you maybe a little bit more, all right? But cool thing is if you have a nerve problem, it slackens the nerve. So it causes your knees to be a little bit more bent. So if you have sciatica and you have trouble with that leg raise on either side and you're really far back, you're going to be reaching with the leg, which can increase the tension and cause you more pain or issues. All right. So you can play with close versus far. You can play with, um, I don't even know how to change this thing, reclining the seat back, which opens up the hip angle or you can play with bringing it forward, which kind of closes down the hip angle, cause a little bit more um, you know, forward motion, maybe pinchiness in the hip and or uh, you know, rounding of the back. So a lot of people have been led to believe with back problems, leg problems that they need to sit up tall, but that might not be what's best for you. So don't get trapped in that mindset, find what works for you, all right? Uh, the other thing you can do is, again, kind of like we move the body from above or from below in a backwards direction like we just talked about, you can move the top, right? So we just reclined or leaned forward, or you can move the bottom. So what you can do is, you can't see a thing that's happening. Okay, cool. So I didn't even know that existed. So this dumps you way back, so you can see how angled up it is, right? Or you can open it up, and now this angle starts to open. So this feels more relaxed for me, all right? So uh, kind of dumped or in a bucket seat um, is something you're gonna wanna experiment with. Usually the more open position feels better. All right, so the next thing to consider is some type of prop, some type of cushion, some type of pillow, some type of lizard. Meet Lizzie the lizard. All right, it's my daughter's lizard. Um, and this would work perfectly. So this is real life, people. This is not like you went on Amazon. Maybe it's like a spur of the moment. You wanna go for a trip or whatever um, to be spontaneous. All right, the idea is that you take something. It could be a, a windbreaker, a coat. Um, I don't know, a blanket a star, it doesn't matter, all right? You take something, you find something, and you start playing with what feels most comfy. So if you're sitting here, because that's what you're gonna have to do, right, you're kinda in this position, how am I feeling? Tune into your body of what you're feeling and where your symptoms are, and you know, a common place to put this would be like, hey, put this ooch back in the seat, put this right on your lower back on your belt line, and Lizzie the lizard helps you sit up straighter. 
You might like that, you might not like it, because here's what happens. When you rock forward, you actually increase the tension on the back of the leg. So again, don't think something's right or something's wrong. So maybe you take out Lizzie and say, all right, Lizzie, what could we do? What we could do is we could maybe sit her underneath the bad cheek, and only the bad cheek. That kind of tilts your pelvis a little bit. How does that feel? All right, Lizzie, that's not working. What do we do? Well, let's do this one, Lizzie. Cool. So we're going to put you under the other one. How does that feel? All right. Or maybe we just need some extra padding and we sit her right under our butt cheek, you know, back or forward or whatever. So the idea is, again, there's no right or wrong, but you're going to want to play with it. Find it before you're driving so you're not ooching around. Although you might need to change it when you're driving, just have an idea of maybe what feels best. All right. So um, that's that. The next thing is that you're going to want to consider what body position is maybe best for you. So again, the body can move forward, it can move backwards, it can move to the right, it can move to the left, uh, and it can rotate. So something I want you to consider is move your body in those positions before you even start driving and find what works for you. Here's what I mean. All right, so the body can move forward, backwards, right, left. We just mentioned that. So what do I mean by that? Before you even get driving, probably not going to be, I'm just an assumption or a guess, a wild guess, but probably not going to be the best position for you because you have trouble driving. But you could try it and just see. So don't rule anything out. So forward. Well, try to just move your body like this and slouch a little bit and see how that feels. So that would be forward. Test it. Tune in your body. Is my leg pain numbness tingling getting worse or do things feel more relaxed? Great. Now what I want you to do is move backwards. It's hard to bend backwards, but you could move your spine a little bit backwards just seated, right? So try that. Hold that for a moment. Maybe hold each of these for five or ten seconds or until you get clarity on what it does for your issue. All right, so that's backwards. See how that feels. Well, how about moving to the right? Well, what we could do is you could lean. So you could chill like this, right? See how it feels, all right? Stay there for a moment. See what happens. Same, better, worse. That's what you should be asking yourself, right? If that doesn't work, see what happens if you do this. How does that feel? You might even feel or find that driving with one arm versus you know two arms or whatnot might make a difference. So you're going to want to test some of these things out. Um, the other thing to consider would be uh, rotation. So this is one that most people haven't thought of, but your body can kind of twist right to the right. So you might do something like this and twist to the right as if you're um, passing Lizzie Lizard back to your child or something like that. All right, so twist the body to the right and see how that feels and then twist the body to the left and see how that feels. And again, what you want to look for is you want to look for the yummiest motion. You want to look for the motion that feels best, puts you in the most comfortable position and reduces symptoms. Now, even if you find something now that feels best, realize that it might change, but work through that process of assessing how this feels. This, right, left, rotation, right, rotation, left. And this way when you're in the car, you're in a better position to know what options you have to find more comfort. And finally, plan ahead. So I can't tell you how many people um, you know, say, hey, I have trouble driving and I'm gonna go to the beach. And the beach is like two hours and they go on a Friday on a holiday and it's just jammed wall-to-wall -wall traffic and they get stuck there. So you know, get an idea of where you're going, how long it's going to take, maybe drink a ton of water before so you know you have to stop, take pee breaks or whatever. But the idea is that plan ahead. Don't get stuck in a scenario where you know it's going to flare you up. Think ahead, make sure that uh, you take breaks, you plan, you plan accordingly, such that you're chunking your trip uh, into um, you know, chunks of time that you feel you're going to be successful with. Right? So if you already know, hey, like 35 minutes, my butt cheek and my leg are going to be on fire, then you're going to have to stop, not for forever, but for now to help calm things down and create an optimal healing environment, maybe at 25 minutes or something like that. So um, just think about that when you're planning ahead and you're trying to think of how you can find most comfort on this next driving trip. All right, so we've talked about things you should be doing uh, and testing and planning before uh, actually driving, but we're gonna share here in a moment how you can get in and out of the car uh, and how you can do it with as much comfort as possible. All right, real quick, let's talk about getting into the car and then later we're gonna have to get out of the car, I'm assuming. So we're gonna chat about getting in the car. So most people, like if I was to get into this car, I would just walk up to the car and I'd do this. I'd do a leg raise. You see it? A leg raise. If you have trouble doing that, you ain't going to be able to do this. It's going to hurt. Okay, so I'd do a leg raise and I'd sit in and I'd do this, right? But maybe you can't do that. So something to consider, all right, is maybe if your right leg raise is yucky, maybe your left leg raise is not. So maybe you would do this and then pull this leg in so it stays bent if you're having kind of some tension problems with probably the nerve in your back leg, sciatica, right? So that's something to consider. Or what you could do is not go forward at all into the car. You could actually go 
backwards. So you'd come into the car like this and you would just sit into it and then ooch or twist around. All right, so now I know that might seem a little bit obvious, but again, think about the motion problem you have. And if you're having trouble doing certain motions, it's going to change how you might find comfort getting into the car, leading with the right leg, leading with the left leg, kind of backing it in, um, all those types of things. Or what you could do is you can get in the back seat, you can climb over top of the seats and I'm just playing with you. You don't have to do that, all right? But the idea is, look, get creative. There's no right or wrong way to go about um, trying to get into the car. You just want to do it with comfort. But those are some options. A lot of times people just don't know what their options are because you just think, this is the way I get in a car. Yeah, normally, but things aren't normal right now. So you've got to be creative and think outside the box about how you can do it. All right, so now you have some strategies that maybe you didn't think of, climbing through the back window and doing some funky stuff to get into the car to find, again, as much comfort as possible. Uh, we're going to chat about some tips that you can use as far as positioning your body uh, in ways that are comfy, uh, as well as some other tips that maybe you haven't thought of uh, while you're actually driving. All right, so let's talk about body position. Now you're in the car, you tested everything out, right? This is a, this is a process, all right? So you need to plan for this, all right? Um, so you get in the car and you know, you're driving. You need to be able to, again, explore forward, backwards, right, left, twist, right, twist, left as options. So don't just get stuck. One thing you need to know is that you're in more, more control of your pain than you probably believe you are. So if you get out of the car and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm a hundred out of a hundred, I'm a 10 out of 10, if that's your scale, right? Just like in terrible pain. Well, you let it get there. You should have stopped. You should have moved. You should have started experiment with these motions I'm giving you. So if you just let things get out of control, then that's your fault, all right? So um, point is, is that you need to be accountable for the pain that you're feeling and try these different options. So think about finding the yummiest body position. I don't care if you think it's right. If the chiropractor, chiropractor told you it was wrong, whatever, all right, there is no right or wrong. All right, so now the other thing, tic-tac, sir. All right. The other thing you want to consider uh, is rotating the leg versus lifting the leg. So a lot of people when they drive, they don't really think about it. It's such like a habit is that instead of going from gas to brake by lifting the hip, which can sometimes cause compression on the low back, what I want you to think about is just rotating. So uh, gas to brake, gas to brake. There's just a lot more effort a lot less effort involved in doing that, uh, the rotation of keeping your heel and pivoting the leg than there is actually lifting um, You know when you're going from gas to brake. So think about that. Um, and then the final thing would be, there's these cool little things on cars nowadays called cruise control. So you're gonna wanna think about that, all right? So it's over here, all right? So when you're driving, again, if you've got a tension thing and that leg raise is really yucky, then think about finding some comfortable position with your leg, obviously be safe, setting it at a comfortable speed, okay? No speeding, all right? Uh, and find what works best for you, but use that feature. All right, so you've been driving uh, for a certain amount of time now, and you are just dreading getting out of the car because you know that it's gonna cause a literal pain in the butt uh, doing so, and it's gonna be hard to stand up tall. Maybe there's some stiffness in the back or some zapping pain that will shoot down the leg. No worries, I'm gonna share with you how you can use movement as medicine uh, and some simple things you can do right before you actually get out of the car to reduce that transitional pain. So give these couple things a try. All right, so transitional problems are a hallmark sign of a disc herniation. A lot of people with disc herniations, well, the number one cause of sciatica is a disc problem. So a lot of people with disc problems have leg pain. I'm not saying it's what you have. If you have questions about what you have, you can download my free Better Than MRI DIY Diagnostic Guide below. But the point is, is that um, getting out of the car is often worse than being in the car itself. So before you get out of the car, you might wanna try one of these two things, or heck, both of them find what works best for you. So, you know, you're sitting there and you've been like this for a while. What I want you to do is I want you to do, hold on to the steering wheel, kind of pull yourself forward, it's gonna be a little bit of stiffness probably. And I want you to do, think of movement as medicine. So before you know there's gonna be an ouchie, go ahead and do this motion, you know, 10, 15 times, and then go ahead, however you wanna do it, whether you pick your legs up, whether you pull yourself out, whatever you gotta do, again, play with that. Um, and then stand and see what happens, all right? So do you have as much stiffness? Do you have as much discomfort? All right, now, maybe that works, maybe it doesn't, but the idea is, is that another thing you might wanna try is just testing your ability to twist the trunk into the yummy side. So looking for a yummy twist. So what you could do is, you know, you're here, you're not quite out of the car, maybe you hang one leg out and you just twist the right and you twist the left, you do the best you can, all right? Twist the right, you twist the left, and you see, ooh, does one feel better than the other? For me, right, 
left, left feels really good. So I would say go into the good twist. So you're gonna go ahead and you can just hold it there or you can do some little pulses. One, two, three, four. You know, a set or two of 20 reps and then stand up and see how things feel, all right? So the idea is, again, think of movement as medicine. You are in control of your pain. If you know you're gonna get out and things are gonna spike, you've got to test some motions as medicine, as your pill, to see if you can change it. So this is the first one, moving in the backwards direction in a seated position. Again, a set or two of maybe 15, 10, 15 reps, whatever you can tolerate. Stand or twist right, twist left, um, and see which works best and work into that a set or two of 15 to 20 reps. All right, great. So now let's chat about what you can do after you're done driving and or during breaks. Uh, so you can use movement as medicine during these times to improve blood supply and get you moving better. So you're out of the car, you made it, all right? And now, you know, you have a chance, maybe you drank a lot of water, like I said, you stopped at a restaurant or a restroom or a pee break, whatever you want to call it, all right? Either way, maybe you need a gas, uh, point is that you're stopped, you're on the side of the road in a safe place. Um, think back to what you found earlier that felt best, right? So think about, can you work into you know, a backwards motion from above, changing the legs, or from below, manipulating how you do that? And or maybe there was a motion that you could somehow figure out how to incorporate while you're standing. Maybe it's a motion that you've tried before that feels good. So you're gonna apply the same concept here. Again, maybe just do 10 reps. You don't need to do lots of them. The idea is just do something and say, okay, that feels pretty good, I can do that. And do it a bunch of times. And then the other thing is, look, if you can tolerate a little bit of walk, just get a little bit of blood flow through. Maybe it's not even a walk that you can tolerate, but if you can, walk a little bit of loop around or find something, even if it's just moving the arms, just find something to get the system moving to improve blood supply, improve oxygenation, because you've been sitting. Um, and uh, just get things moving a little bit uh, immediately after, kind of like a cool down. Think of this driving event, uh, you know, some, like some major sporting event, all right? Uh, so you've got a warm up, you've got stuff you're doing while you're doing it, uh, you've planned, and now you need to cool down a little bit. Um, and here's the thing, you know, apply this kind of common sense, I guess, logic. If you just got done driving and you've had a long, um, you know, trip, Yes, during the breaks, do your movement and then after doing your movement, but don't go ahead and put yourself in a driving position after driving. So a lot of people, they get to wherever they're gonna get and they're like, oh, long drive, and they sit and they chill on the couch like this again in the same exact position as driving. So just think about that and plan accordingly so that you can be up moving around or in whatever position feels best. Maybe you've got to lie down or something like that. But again, um, vote for yummy, find a good comfy position and use movement, whatever feels best as your medicine. All right, so let me know which tip in the comments below, comment in the comments section, uh, was most helpful uh, in reducing pain and or helping you uh, on your next driving excursion, experience, whatever. All right, so there we have it. Those are all the tips and strategies I have and all the things I share with my private clients when they say, Dr. Charlie, I hate driving, I hate sitting, things like that. So first things first, just flash it up here. Uh, for you uh, one more time. We talked about why it hurts driving. You can see that there's a clear movement pain relationship and that's why it's troublesome to drive. We talked about some things you could explore before driving, testing and planning things out before even starting on your trip, getting into the car, some things you can test while driving, uh, some things you can do uh, during breaks because again, you've planned to take some breaks while you're driving and or after driving. Uh, and just before that, we talked about uh, how to get out of the car and some strategies uh, that you can use, uh, specifically movement as medicine, uh, to do that with as much comfort as possible. If this was valuable to you, go ahead, like. Again, you can hit the subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications when I post content every single week, teaching you day-to-day -day tips and strategies as well as how to use movement as medicine. Um, also, look, uh, if you enjoyed kind of the concepts that I gave you, if you enjoyed understanding the why behind why you hurt and what you're feeling, uh, and this idea behind understanding how your body moves and you know why it's in trouble. And what I would uh, recommend you do is go ahead, download the Better Than a Ride DIY Diagnostic Guide, walks you through a bunch of self-movement tests so you can kind of apply some of these concepts. Also, I'd recommend you check out uh, my free workshop, Beat Butt Pain, which will teach you some simple secrets that I share with the people who work with me privately uh, to help you skyrocket your chances of relief, uh, as well as unlock natural healing if that's what you're looking for. So thanks everyone. Until next week, chat soon and take care.